Hey, welcome to the uh, Warhammer 40k uh, Bolter Z Modeler um, tutorial series. Bit of a mouthful. Um, so on this one, we're going to be. Um, I just took. Uh, it's just a side view reference of a Warhammer 40k Bolter that we're going to model entirely here, uh, just in Z Modeler and, and, and a couple of ZBrush tools as well. So originally, um, I haven't really. I've only been using Z Modeler. <laughs> I've only I was nearly going to avoid it altogether because I still model in 3D Max and I, I I didn't think I'd ever need to bother um, modeling in Z Modeler because I'm so comfortable in Max. But um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, to learn it myself and get try and get good at it and also for other people to learn. So originally I was going to do this tutorial in 3D Max, but as I say, um, I'll go with Z Modeler and uh, it'll be beneficial for me and hopefully other people as well. So this is just a quick aside uh, to show you. This is the project of recently more or less finished modeling. There's a few more bits to add. So this was all modeled in uh, 3D Max here, except for the skeleton on the front. I just built a base mesh, a really simple base mesh in Max, and uh, used DynaMesh and then decimated and brought it back in. And the armor that was built in Max as well, uh, parts taken off the original car and shaped. And then I just brought it into uh, Max this part, or sorry, into ZBrush this part as well, just to create some damage. But uh, everything else, um, everything was else was built here in 3D Max. So, oh, the spoiler as well. I think I brought that in, and this rear bit of armor uh, for damage in ZBrush. But as I say, rest of it was all modeled. So it's just the difference. Um, I'll be modeling in Z Modeler using Box Modeler, Box Modeling because it is a Box Modeler. Whereas in Max here, I'd be mostly using uh, edge extrusion modeling. So, um, with that out of the way, uh, we'll get back into ZBrush. So, the first thing we're going to do here is uh, I'm just going to go up here and uh, choose plain 3D, drag it out into canvas, T to go into edit mode, and just choose skin shade and turn on <coughs> sorry, polyframe. So, Come down to initialize, and uh, or sorry, first I'm going to turn on the floor. So this is just an introduction, introductory video, really, um, setting up the reference in the background. So you can set up the reference using Spotlight, but um, I find it much better to uh, for this type of thing to uh, use um, over in the draw palette here. Um, this dedicated um, reference tools that are connected to your floor grid over here. So um, there's a hell of a lot more features, and uh, you know. Spotlight can be handy for some things, but uh, reference-wise, but um, this is, as I say, dedicated tool set for this. So, um, before we uh, do anything here with this polyplane 3D, I'm just going to come down up to the draw menu and come right down to left-right. So we're going to be model modeling this uh, symmetrically across the x-axis, and that'll be the thickness of the gun. So we want to use left-right, and that'll be on the z-axis. So I'll come down, click on map one and import and just go to wherever you have your uh, your reference image and in this case it'll be this bolter image and you can see here it's come in across uh, the Z axis so what we want to do now is uh, we want to align the um, the plane here before we turn into a polymesh 3D it'll just save us rotating it you can just hit a uh, align X here we have a into in the position that we want it to be in and um, so I'm going to change these segments change that to 3 and we'll change that to 10 so that's pretty much our plane as we want it and you can see that uh, make polymesh 3d by default the plane 3d when you turn into a polymesh 3d as a uh, creasing around the edges so I don't want that because we're going to add creasing and um, later on whilst we're modeling so I'll just come down to your geometry rollout here a crease rollout and just uncrease all and that's that now one other thing here um personally I, I don't really like that um uh, the way the the floor grid there is is green so I'm going to change that and a few other different things and um, it's personal preference but it, you know here's what you can do um, if you wanna, if you wanna follow, follow along. Um, one other thing that I like to do is just to turn off this P line because um, as you're modeling, it'll uh, 
project like a sort of a, a laser line from your mesh back to your reference and it's just it's a bit of a pain in the arse I don't like it anyway so I just turn that off if you are finding that you have that and you don't know where to find the option to turn it off it's in here P line um, under the whichever the uh, views uh, your map happens to be in um, so now down to uh, modifiers here and what we want to do here is I want to change these two colors so the grid color here I'm going to change that to, to black so we just hold down C while I'm hovering over that's ZBrush's color picker and then just drag with your left mouse button um, up to black and that will change that to black and then back into draw and to the bottom one and I'm going to hold down C and drag onto the color of the background of my canvas here and sorry that I did that, that I did that the wrong way around I dragged back onto the same one so grid color C left mouse button onto black draw C fill color onto the background and draw and you can come down here to uh, RGB fill and just bring that down to zero um, and then one other thing I like to do is come down here to frame opacity and you can just uh, darken up that frame opacity it's up to you same again this is all sort of sorry RGB frame all the way to zero this is all subjective sort of uh, personal taste stuff now one other thing that's going to be very important to do is um, you can see up here this fill mode I have uh, dragged onto my interface now what that fill mode does is if it's at zero your reference plane disappears and then one and two one makes it semi-transparent two makes it fully opaque and then three makes your sub tool semi-transparent so it's handy to have it here rather than rummaging around up here in this menu so uh, you'll find that just here fill mode and then if you want you can uh, drag it up onto your UI so I'll just show you real quickly how to do that how to drag anything onto your UI customizer interface go up here to preferences uh, config enable customize and uh, now you can take anything so in this case let's say we wanted to grab that uh, fill mode and then if you hold control alt and just drag you can drag it and when you see it there you know when it's when it's popped into the interface and you can just drag it out anywhere and if you don't want it or if you want to change things around or pull things off you can just drag it back in here and onto the canvas and it'll disappear <coughs> and it won't change so you can drag things off to get rid of them and drag things up and snap them into place and then once you have that done you can press control shift and I and that's going to save your um, your UI and it, or you can press control shift alt and I and that will allow you to store a UI config file all right, so that's um, that's the basics now of uh, what I wanted to show in this introduction, setting up our um, our grid, our reference, and just getting our first object in place here to start modeling. So uh, that's enough for that one, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, cheers, thanks, good luck.